let's talk about who these different generations are. The study of generations, it's not just about putting people in a box. Scott did a great job. Fantastic. Spot on with everything. By 2025, millennials will comprise 75% of the global workforce. They're not a fad. They're not going away. Think in terms of evolution, not revolution. They do not wake up in the morning and ask themselves, how can I be a disrespectful pain in the butt today? It made me laugh. And it was very moving. And it really hit home. Nice. During my time at Bridgeworks, I've given almost 200 different presentations, have interviewed hundreds of different people on the topic of generations. Whether it's finance, hospitality, banking, whether we're working with nonprofits or Fortune 500 companies, Every single organization we go into can benefit from what we have to say because every single organization at one point or another has experienced some kind of generational gap in their workplace. We've all experienced that moment where we fail to connect with another generation. We fail to get on the same page as them. What works for recruiting, retaining, motivating, engaging one generation isn't going to necessarily work with another. In fact, oftentimes, it's the very thing that just turns another generation off. And when that happens, more times than not, we get frustrated. We go to a negative place. We focus in on who's acting like an entitled brat. Not that anyone in here has ever thought that. Or maybe we think about who needs to get with the times. Rather than find ways where we can bring our different generational talents and perspectives to the table to get the job done. So we don't just come in and recite a bunch of things that you could Google, but we take it a step further and we give context for each generation. It gets them to look at their colleagues differently and understand that, oh, that's why they do that. That's where that comes from. You were always waiting for the latest and greatest. Look at on the farm. Look at what the inside of a tractor looked like when you were growing up. Look at what an inside of a tractor looks like today. <laughs> Not to again sound like Grandpa Scott, but I was lucky growing up if I got to drive the tractor that had the AM FM radio on the wheel well. Let alone XM radio, heated seats, iPads, self-steering tractors. It is insane the amount of change and evolution that has happened just in your industry, in agriculture and farming, within the confines of the millennials' formative years. You're a generation that experienced a rate of change unlike any other generation before you. One of my mentors said, if you're not entertaining, you're not educating. We're keeping it interactive. We'll do icebreakers, we'll do music trivia, commercials, movie clips, TV clips, viral videos. We should recognize our stereotypes, but also not let them define us. So we have a little bit of fun and we don't take ourselves too seriously and audiences really relate to that. A couple of years ago I was giving a speech and a young man comes up to me. He had to be 23 years old. He was very young. And he's like, that was great. My boss is a baby boomer. The guy hates me. So this is going to come in handy. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sure your boss doesn't hate you, by the way. I thought he was being a little dramatic about the whole thing. And he looks at me and he thought about that for a second. He's, he goes, no, no, I'm pretty sure he hates me. <laughs> and I couldn't help it. I was being nosy. I said, well, is he here? Point him out. So I make my way over and we're at the bar and I, I slip it into the conversation. I say, oh, by the way, I met somebody on your team earlier. I met so-and-so. And he looks at me and goes, oh yeah, so-and-so? I hate that kid. And that's such a shame when these moments happen because all these great opportunities for mentorship, for reverse mentorship, they don't happen when we just don't like each other. The topic of generations is a bottom line issue. It affects recruiting, retaining, motivating, engaging, onboarding. It could be sales. It could be more in the marketplace. What does good customer service look like to a baby boomer versus a Gen Xer? How do you build those relationships with outside clients who are of another generation? Whatever your industry, this is something that affects everyone. 
to each and every one of you, thank you so much for having me here today. I want to leave you with this final thought. When it comes to effective generational communication, it's not about age. It's not about old versus young. It's not about right or wrong. It's about understanding that each and every single generation, whether it's a colleague, a member, every single generation is bringing something different, unique, and important to the table. And it's up to you as leaders and mentors to tap into that. Thank you folks so much, I appreciate it.